Hey everyone, and welcome to part three in my mini series, Colorful Second Brain. Today we are going to talk about simple rules for beautiful and reusable sketches. Today's episode is going to build on things that we've learned in part two and in part one. So if something is unclear, feel free to go back and rewatch part two or part one, or to ask me a question in comments and I'm going to be happy to help. I want to cover three topics today. First, we're going to talk about how having simple rules is more than just about aesthetics. It's also about reusability. Then we're going to talk about some basic approaches and rules for using colors and how you can keep it simple. And third, we're going to look at typography, how being clever about text and text sizing can help you with reusability as well. The consistent use of colors and typography is the foundation of reusability. Why do I say that? If you take a look at my stencil library, you will see that I have different color schemes here. Up here, you can see my new color scheme that I've also used, for example, in my book on a page and I plan to use in the future. And then below that, you will see that in my stencil library, I have all sorts of different colors. I had a period where I had only black and white items, but I also have many different colors here. This is all mashed up. Now, if I want to use an icon from here, for example, if I would want to use this brain icon from here, I can drop it in here, that's great. But then if I look at this entire drawing, it just doesn't look as good as it could with this color scheme. Had I been more clever about this, then this brain would fit this drawing much better. Also, you can see that this brain here is large. Now, of course, I can change the size of this to make it smaller. And in this case, I'm lucky because the sizing was close to correct. But if I would make it smaller and smaller, then suddenly you can see that the thickness of the lines as well as the slopiness of the lines becomes a problem and this brain doesn't look as good in small. Now, of course, I could go in and start to change some of the settings and try to make it look better, but then this is going to add friction to my process. I cannot just simply reuse this item in my drawing. If I have a couple of simple rules that I adhere to, which will result in similar sized drawings because the text will set the size and similar palettes or similar colors because of a common palette, then reusability is going to be a much easier topic. Second, if you're clever about applying colors, it can add contrast to your page and it is going to make it easier for you or for someone else to interpret whatever is on the page. It just makes it easier to read because you know what's the important, what's supporting text, you can easily find drawings. Also, by having colors and a simple color scheme, it can help you in assessing if you have a drawing that is too heavy on image or on text, and it can help you create balanced sketches, which not only mean aesthetically balanced, but also balanced content-wise, meaning you have enough explanation, but you don't have too much explanation. You have enough image, but it's not too high level such that you will not remember later on. And you will be able to see this at a glance because the color composition and the balance of your drawing is going to reflect the content composition of your drawing as well. And third, colors help structure the note-taking process. And this is what we're going to look at in the next piece. So if you consistently apply a color approach, that is going to also drive 
a process which will shape your thinking as well. In a way, this is also a tool for thought. This is a graphical tool for thought. So under colors, I'm going to talk about three different approaches. I recommend starting here. So if you're new to sketchnoting, new to sketchnoting in Obsidian with Excolid Draw, I recommend keeping it simple. There are lots of colors to choose from. I recommend keeping it simple. It's going to look better and also it's going to be more reusable in the end. The three color technique is something I learned from Doug Neal from verbal to visual. I'm going to leave a link to his video in the description. He explains it probably better than I do, but I'm going to add some obsidian specific items as well. So the point in the three color technique is you have three colors. You have one color for the imagery. You have a second color, which is your primary text color. And you have a third color, a gray color, which is a helper color that you can use for secondary text as well as supporting imagery like arrows and clouds and things like that. Having a third color, having a gray is immensely useful because there's lots of secondary stuff you want to put on a drawing. If everything is vivid, it makes the drawing hard to read. And for that reason, having a gray in your palette is super useful and I do recommend doing that. When you're choosing your colors in the three color technique, I recommend choosing vivid or strong colors for your imagery and for your primary text and something lighter for your gray. It doesn't need to be gray as you will see in this next approach. And the next approach is the single color palette, which is a monochromatic palette. You only use a single color, but you use different shades of that color. In this case, my secondary text is a lighter version of the primary color. And you can see that even with a monochromatic scale, you can create colorful looking objects using a single monochromatic palette will ensure that your drawings are not visually overwhelming. It will just look simpler and nicer. If nonetheless you want to use multiple colors, then here are a couple of best practices to keep in mind. First of all, you should choose an accent color and that is my first row right here. And then the rest of the colors should be dimmer. Back to my book on a page on Deep Work, you will see that I have a warm background color. This is my base color and my accent color right here is a bit more vivid. And altogether in this palette, I have 10 colors in total, or if we count the blacks and the grays, then 15 colors in total. And I think the end result looks pretty nice and balanced. Now, if you need more colors and two colors are not enough, you can have a palette with four colors that will give you more flexibility. But in this case as well, the recommendation is try to keep your accent color vibrant and the rest of the colors a bit more dim. In terms of color management, I recommend standardizing the structure of your palettes. In part two, we talked about the paletten.com tool and how you can create palettes. I recommend making sure that your palette files look a standard way. The approach we looked at the last time was using this JSON format, though I also showed you this text-based format. The way I enhanced palette loader in the meantime is now you can add comments in between your palettes. And the reason for this is I realized that, for example, I have this blue vibrant palette here. Now, if I want to change this, that is extremely difficult because I'm not able to go back to Paladin 
to change this because I don't know the settings I had. So for this reason, now you can add comments into your palette and those comments can be links. And if I click on this link, then this is going to take me to Paladin. And here I can see my palette. This is the vivid red color. And if I come back here and click on the other link, then this is going to be the less vibrant other three colors that I use from here. And the way you export this is you come to tables export, click on text and you get this text format output. If I only want the three secondary colors from here, then I can copy the three colors. I can open Notepad++, paste it in here. In Notepad++, if I hold down Alt Shift, then I can select an area like this. And with this in couple of clicks, I can format this data set such as it looks in my palette file. So you can see I have my three secondary colors like this. And this is what I had right here. Also, just a point on how you can use Paladin for setting up these colors. So if I come back here, this is my vivid red. And if I want to now define my dimmer secondary colors i can click here on fine tune and i can start to decrease the saturation of the color i can also increase the brightness of the color and decrease the contrast and with this i can come to a color palette for my dimmer colors that i enjoy the more i remove the saturation the more it will move to the gray area so back to our discussion. When you look at your palette, I recommend making sure that the sequence of your colors is the same. So here in my two palette setup, I actually am not using the recommendation I have here. I'm doing it exactly the opposite way. So in this case, in my palette, I have my accent color second and my pastel or dimmer color first, I actually recommend switching this around because that is how I'm doing it for my vibrant colors. And this is the learning. So you need to think through how you want to structure your palette and always do that. I recommend putting the vibrant color first and then the dimmer ones. And if you're clever about your palettes then you can use the palette switcher to switch between palettes so here i'm going to switch from this is the my palette warm i'm going to switch to the cool palette and i'm going to ask that x draw does try to repaint and you can see that with a single switch I moved my drawing from the previous a warm palette to a cool palette. Here my accent color is the orange and my base color is this greenish blue color. You can have your opinion whether this looks nice or not. The point what I'm trying to get across is that if you're clever about how you apply your palette, you will be able to display your drawing with different palettes and it will help you with reusability because there are situations where you want to use one or the other color scheme. And this way, with a simple click, you can switch between the different palettes and your drawing will still look nice and coherent because the colors within the palette will work out nicely with each other. Also, creating a single palette for yourself may require multiple settings in Paladin. And that is what we did here, where I loaded my vibrant color and then I changed, fine-tuned the color, which resulted in this dimmer palette. And then I exported this. And these are the second, third and fourth colors in my palette. And here you can see the result that this palette comes from two different palette and settings. And finally, let's talk a little about 
text. I don't want to dwell too much on this, but I've learned that having a standard for text sizing and actually using the standards in Excolidraw. So you can see here that for text, you have small, medium, large, and extra large text. Using these consistently will help you size your images right. So the text in itself looks good when you're zoomed out to 100%. It looks readable. And if the drawings match the size of your text, that is just simply going to be super helpful because then if you copy a piece of drawing from one drawing to another or from your stencil library into your drawing, it's just going to look better when it follows a standard sizing. Now, how you want to apply and what rules you want, in my mind, the title of the document that is something custom. So coming back here, you will see that these here on the side, these are custom sized text, but then my section headings you can see here and the rest of the text, they follow a standard. Now the gray that I'm using here is not a very light gray. So therefore maybe the gray and the black you don't see such a strong contrast, but I am consistently using uh, grays and blacks here as well, as well as heading text and section headers, etc. I think this approach helps you with being more consistent. Now, if you're wondering how I created this title, this was extremely simple, but I'll show you. So this is my title text. I'm going to make a copy of title. I'm going to zoom in in this case. And I have a copy of that title text with a different color. And voila, I have this nice shadowy background to the text, which if I group and enlarge, then I can simply create this more fancy looking uh, shadow text in Excolidraw. So to summarize, we looked at three things today. We looked at how simple rules are more than just about aesthetics. They are about reusability as well and process and repeatability. We looked at different color schemes. I recommend starting with the three color technique. You can choose three different colors, but pay attention that the first two should be strong colors and the last one should be a lighter color. I think a monochromatic palette is beautiful or can be beautiful. So I do recommend experimenting with that. And if you want multiple colors, then I recommend having a color that is strong and vivid and the rest should be dimmer. Otherwise your sketch will just look visually overwhelming. And finally, if you establish a couple of simple rules for typography, that is going to help you in reusability as well, because the different components that you might be reusing in a drawing will have similar sizes and the text on those components will also look similar and you'll not need to spend time on constantly resizing. So getting back to the colorful second brain storyline, next time I will go into a bit more technical details about how you can program color in Xcolidraw. As you might remember from part one, I added a library called Color Master and that gives you lots of power over how you manage colors and how you can create color palettes automatically in Xcolidraw as well. And I think there are some cool use cases that I want to show you. And from here, I thought we will move on to talking about the use of colors across your Obsidian Vault. And I'm still unsure what exactly the mystery topic is going to be, but I have a couple of ideas. So we will see if there's interest. I'm sure I'm going to create a six video here as well on the topic of color. Thank you for watching until the end and I hope to see you next time.